Hi, my name is Tim Klepto and I work in Educational Technology in Wagga Wagga, Australia. My application to the Shuttleworth Foundation Fellowship Program centres on improving access to educational content and resources by rethinking the publishing process. Historically, authoring and publishing has centred around designing an artefact in a singular form for a specific audience and context. You knew that if you were writing a book, what form it would take, what it would essentially look like, how it would work, the audience was going to read it, and most likely the context in which it was going to be read. But digital technology has changed all that. We no longer live in an age where content is defined by a single artifact. That book, well, now we want to be able to access it on our desktop at home, on a laptop in a cafe, on our tablet on our commute, or on a mobile on the run, or even to curl up and enjoy the tactile nature of a printed page. But this isn't a first world problem. Each of these mediums suits specific audiences around the world. People may require print because they lack power or devices. They may have a tablet, but no internet. They may have the internet, but only intermittently. None of these conditions can be serviced by a single artifact. There's a need for publishing for print and the web and mobile, and to cater for both online and offline access. The proliferation of devices, formats, operating systems, and standards available have made publishing incredibly complex. We also have to take into account the diverse requirements, needs, and access that our audiences have to these technologies. Current practices and technologies aren't able to cope with this diversity and they've reached their limit. They're becoming less efficient and have an impact on how effective initiatives can be. The value of the open movement is currently limited by access. Projects like educational resources that use online methods of delivery are hampered by inequality in access and availability of technologies and the internet. But what if we could liberate content? What if we can make it truly accessible regardless of the device you have, your access to the internet, or your geographic location? And what if we could simplify that publishing process so that anyone can create once and with the push of a button, publish everywhere? The solution to this is creating content that is adaptive. And that's where Tadpole comes in. Tadpole is the name we gave to the adaptive digital publishing engine. And it's a new way of framing the authoring and publishing process so that content can be adapted to suit a range of endpoints and purposes. Tadpole adopts the concept of metamorphosis, where conspicuous and abrupt transformation is used to adapt to changes in habitat or behaviour. The kind of changes to our habitat and behaviour that the democratisation of digital technology and the growth of the internet have created. The way Tadpole works is that rather than transcribe or translate content from one format to another, Tadpole dramatically reforms and reshapes pieces of content to perfectly suit each different application, medium and context. The way it does this is through a simple innovation, the adaptive media element, the AME. The AME is not a single file, but a meta object or container that encompasses a range of related information, files, and data. For example, an AME might contain the file itself, like a video, a web link to an online library like YouTube, source information from where it came from, the licensing that's attached, as well as alternative files, a transcript, and metadata, like a title, caption, and a description. The other key concept of Tadpole is the publishing profile. And this defines how the AME is assembled during the publishing process. So for our video example, well, you can't print a video, but you can show an image and a link to where the video can be found online. A video can be embedded inside an ebook, making it available offline. And for an online version, you can simply embed the YouTube clip. In this way, a profile can be developed for each kind of output you want from the system. And each file output can then be expanded to adapt the layout and content to specific audiences too like those that are visually impaired or blind. The real value of Tadpole is that it can be used for and by anyone wishing to publish content across platforms and audiences. It has been designed for flexibility, from an education to public health, from textbooks to whole courses, from chemistry to art history. Tadpole's value comes from its ability to adapt to any content in order to make information more accessible. There are four components to this project. The first is to move Tadpole from a proof of concept to production so that it can be packaged and distributed widely. The next step is to build a library of AME types and publishing profiles to aid adoption. Once the software is available, we need to engage with potential users like the OERU, the Open Textbook Movement, and open universities and educational institutions to test and improve the system. Finally, is to experiment with simplifying Tadpole to improve sharing and its capabilities for content to be retained reused, revised, remixed, and redistributed. Tadpole is about improving equity and access, and by doing so, improving openness.